Welcome to the Long Branch Baptist Church. We are saving souls and solving problems. We are long breath strong. Thank you for joining us. Well, hello everyone. It is so good to be with each one of you on today. I'm Sean Dogan, pastor of Lone Branch Baptist Church in Greenville, South Carolina, and it is a joy to be with you on today. Listen, I want you to know that God is so good. He is so kind. He is so gracious. He is so loving. Our God takes care of us. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that not only does God take care of us, but he grants us what we need when we need it. And I'm thankful for that. Listen, I'm so happy that you're here. I pray that you will share this broadcast with others. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms. And we're just grateful that God has connected us in this wonderful way. So share, 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 and we'll be grateful unto you. We also want you to know that we are in much prayer for those who are going through troubled times, bereavement, sickness, um, financial difficulties, whatever your issues are, I know that our God is able to help us with them. We want to be in much prayer for the Durton family. One of the senior members of our church, Sister Juanita Durton, went home to be with the Lord, and we pray much for their family. The services are incomplete at this time, but Beasley Mortuary, Beasley Funeral Home, has her remains, and so you can keep up by going to their website. We're hoping that we can work something out for this weekend, but if not, we'll go over into next week. The Lord will figure it out and he'll help us figure it out as well. So we thank God for her life. Um, I remember when I first came to Lone Branch, she was such an intricate part of the music department, um, singing with um, the gospel choir at that time. And then the famous Friendly Four with Sister Janie Rice and others. And we're just grateful um, for her life and how she contributed to this side um, of the Jordan. So we're just grateful, grateful, grateful. We also want um, everyone to know that there are exciting things happening at Lone Branch. Our 945, 1145 services, God is moving by his power. We've tried to finish a lesson for the past couple of weeks entitled Praise Escape. We're going to finish it this Sunday. So let's just call it a series. I didn't know it was going to be a series, but we're going to call it a series in order that we can complete the assignment on this week. Please be in prayer for us. We'll be in revival coming up soon, and we pray that God will bless um, and rule and super rule. Um, starting the third Sunday, we'll be at New Poplar Springs um, that afternoon. I think it's three o'clock for their men's day. And then the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th will be at the Mountain Grove Baptist Church in Travelers Rest, South Carolina, where one of the daughters of the ministry pastors, Dr. Jacqueline Fair, and we're looking forward to fellowshipping with all of our dear friends and loved ones in the Traveler's Rest community. So listen, that revival starts at 6.30, 6.30 nightly. And so we'll be there the 22nd through the 24th. We'll take a rest day on the 25th. And then on the 26th, we'll be in Pickens. We'll be at Smith Chapel of FBH Church in Pickens, South Carolina on the 26th. That's at seven o'clock p.m. We'll make sure that we have that in our announcements. And then um, on that next um, following week, we'll be at 
Mount Moriah Baptist Church. The last week of August, we'll be at Mount Moriah. One of the sons of the ministry pastors there, Pastor um, Kiwan Gray, and we are looking forward forward to being with our dear friends in the Anderson County area. Listen, God is doing great things and we're grateful about it. For most of our college students, they are getting ready to go off to college. Y'all pray for us. Uh, we're grateful for all of our college students. But as you all know, one that's very special to First Lady and I, um, she's right from our loins. And we are grateful that God has allowed us to see her grow up and um, prosper and mature in such a way. So Ramaya will be headed off to school next week and we pray much for her and all of our college students. Uh, we're just so proud of all of our college students and those who um, are here um, going to places locally and those who are going off far. We say, God bless you. Keep in contact, keep connected, watch. Um, the broadcast, um, stay connected as well. A we also want you to know that coming up this fall, starting in September, we need your help. We need your help. We need your help. We will be doing the Furman football concessions, and we need you to start signing up. That sign up um, will begin real soon. We will have the dates for all of the games. It's the home games, and we need your help. Our youth department um, and our global missions, they really benefit um, from our um, efforts there at Furman. And we're so grateful for that partnership um, that we can do concessions and that we receive um, gifts for um, doing those concessions. And last year it was phenomenal and we are really grateful for it. So if you are able to help us with concessions, it's five home games, five home games. We would love for you to volunteer for for, for, for one or more, uh, but um, we, we, we thank you for your time. So if you can only do one, that is perfectly fine. If you can do all five, we will be shouting for joy, um, but we need you. Ministry leaders, please help us with that. Encourage your ministry participants um, to help us um, to volunteer. If we go ahead and volunteer and get the number of people signed up um, early, we don't have to be stressed and we don't have to be um, down to the last minute and calling and asking and begging. Listen, we want you to volunteer. We want us we want to have great fellowship together and we want to support a great cause. So our church global um, efforts are supported by and our youth department is supported by. Speaking of our youth department, I want tonight to be something special. I know we normally go into the word of the Lord. I give you a lesson. I give you principles that I believe the Lord is telling us to live by. Usually that's two, um, two to four principles. And we normally encourage um, each other um, through the word of God. And I want us to do that as well. But I, today I want us to do something special. At our church, we are blessed to have on our staff a person that focuses on our youth, focuses on not only youth activity, but youth maturity, um, maturing them spiritually, making sure that things are available and resources are available to our young people um, and their families in order to help them grow. We brought him on staff a little over a year ago, and he is doing a wonderful job job. So tonight, as we do our Bible study time, I want to go to the scripture, but I also want to invite in tonight um, Brother Donovan Parks, who serves as our youth director at Lone Branch Baptist Church. So as Brother Parks enters, we're just grateful um, for each one of you sharing with us. I'm going to pray um, and then we're going to start a conversation. This is going to be a dialogue. We're going to base it um, off the word of the Lord. But I want us just to have a very open conversation about our young people. Our public schools here locally is starting back to school very soon. And I know we have some important upcoming events. Many of you have donated school supplies. Many of you have been praying for our events, praying for our youth. Um, but we want to go a little deeper today um, to talk not only from the scripture, 
but even um, the principles from the scripture, but also some practical things as well. So let's pray together and then we'll jump into our conversation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for this day and the opportunity to come together, oh Lord. Our Father, as we search your word and as we have this conversation about that which you have given unto us, the fruit of our loins. And, and Father, we pray that, that you will just give us the wisdom and the courage and the faith in order that we can not only rear and raise in the fear of you, but also rear and raise our young people in a way that they will be successful in society. They will be productive citizens of society and productive citizens of the kingdom of God. We love you. We thank you. And we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. So first of all, hello, Brother Parks. Well, hello, everybody. Hey, Pastor, I appreciate the opportunity to get on. I'm usually on the other side of this on Wednesdays, but I get to get some, uh, some airtime today. That's right. So Brother Parks not only handles our youth development or as our youth director, but he also is over all of our media services. We combine these two because we think that um, not only does he have the gifts and skill um, skill sets to handle both, but we know working with youth, you have to be creative working with youth. You have to also involve media working with youth. You have to do things that's, that's um, attractive not only to their ears, but also their eyes in order that their hands um, can become active and productive. So listen, I hope everybody um, is giving a shout out to our youth. Listen, please take time to hashtag LBY. Um, I'm sure Brother Parts has all kind of hashtags he can come up with and tell us what we can put in the chat. But mine tonight, I want to be hashtag LBY. So if you could just do LBY in the chat, um, that just gives support to our young people. And then by the end, so you be thinking of some young people because by at the end of the broadcast tonight, what I want you to do in the chat is that I want you just to start placing some young people's names in the chat um, that you love, that you're covering in prayer, that you want to support. And we just want to just do a big blast of names, just filtering social media. Um, and, and, and that's our way of calling out their names. I know we're going to have a special prayer time um, this, this weekend for it, but I want you to start thinking, I don't put the names in there yet. Uh, we're going to do that just a little later, but go ahead and start making your list of names in order that we can be prepared for that. All right, listen, I want to read a scripture real quick, and it comes from Mark's gospel, chapter number 10, verses 13 through 16. Mark 10, verses 13 through 16. Listen to the word of the Lord. It says, then they brought little children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But Jesus saw it. When Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Now listen to verse number 16. And he took them up in his arms, listen to this, laid his hands on them and blessed them. I think that this is probably one of the most empowering scriptures when it comes to youth. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most uplifting and inspirational passages when it comes to youth because it talks about not only youth, but it talks about the struggles and, listen to me good, the systems that come against our youth. Now listen, the Bible says that these people, these mothers, these, these individuals are bringing their children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. All they wanted him to do was just touch them. How many of us just want, just want the Lord just to touch our children? Just, Lord, just touch our children. Lord, if you lay your hands on my child, I, I know they'll be better. They'll be great. They'll be wonderful. They'll be successful. But then it says, Brother Parks, and this is what I want us to get into tonight. It says, and when this happened, the disciples rebuke those that brought them. 
In other words, there was a system that was trying to keep the kids away from the Lord. So let's 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 bring it down a little bit. There was a system that tried to stop the kids from being successful in this way. And when we think about it, we have school systems, we have um, jobs, we have we have all types workforce development. We have all types of systems that are out there. And I'm not saying that the systems are evil. As a matter of fact, or the people in the systems are evil. As a matter of fact, the disciples were good people. The disciples were God's chosen people or Jesus' chosen people. But they still did things to block young people. And we see this, I think, even in the church or even in areas of trying to do good, things that stop our young people. Can, can we just talk a little bit about maybe good people may be the cause of kids not being interested in church or doing good or, 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 or just volunteering? Let's just talk for a moment and let's just give our young people some credit a little bit that just state that there's a lot of things against them. You want to talk about just some of the things that are against our young people right now? Yes, sir, Pastor. There's there's so much um, uh, that our young people have to deal with. Um, me coming from the elementary and middle and high school background, I mean, the things that even with me being 34 that I had to deal with when I was in school is not even close to some of the things that the students have to deal with now. You talked about the things that are fight that our children are fighting against and things they have to deal with. Well, one of those is, uh, I know the Bible mentions uh, that Satan is in the airways, uh, the media, the phones, uh, mine stays with me. The things that they have to see and hear, uh, they're allowed to have their phones in school. They don't get a break from this. If you, if you allow them at home to be on it, literally their entire world and life can be based off of the phone and what they see on social media. So they're fighting against that. Uh, they're fighting against what their friends are saying about social media, what their friends are saying about them on social media. Uh, you'd be surprised how many things happen because of what social media are started by a text message or started by that. But then as pastor said, these students though, even though they're having all of these things that are against them, they are still able and capable to progress, to move forward, to be successful. And that's number one, because of uh, God instilled in them from the church, from family. And that's what our responsibility is as parents. It's our responsibility is as a church, as youth directors and pastors, to be able to let them know, even through all the things that they're going to fight against, not to tell them and discourage them by saying, oh, you do that, you're not going to be successful. No, you know, the thing I want to say, pastors, is that we have to do a better job as older ones to not just completely dismiss the things that they do. Because that is the biggest way to turn them off to, you know, a lot of times we say that you just sit in the corner like this and they don't want to say nothing. That's because they've been turned off to us. We probably said something to them that they remembered. They used to say um, uh, back in school, you're like, oh, he's holding a grudge against me. Well, that, listen, they, they they remember when you might have said or did something. But I, I don't want to fool with them. One of the things I used to do in my classroom is really make sure that we set up a sense of family a sense of safeness, a sense of security. And we have to do that with our with our youth because otherwise they're not going to open up to you. They're not going to talk to you about what's going on. They're not going to let you know how they feel. Make them feel available, make them feel comfortable so they can share to you about that hard situation. That opens up conversation for us to be able to get into the Bible, get into real life situations. Yeah. You know, one thing in this text, it says, then they brought. I, I like that they because that's a sense of community. You mentioned about family in the classroom being like a family, mm -hmm. um, but they brought, you know, I think a lot of times we, we have, we see, you know, she, 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 she took, or he took, or they, or she brought, or he brought, but the sense of community that they brought the children to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I believe as a church, we can bring our young people um, to the Lord. I think that's, I think that's, I think that's so important. You know, one thing that hurts my heart and, and it happens every year, I get the phone calls about it every year. And that is our young people um, being, for lack of better words, and I'll just kind of put it out there, misunderstood that we have five-year-olds getting expelled from school. Mm -hmm. uh, we're having elementary school age children getting in trouble because maybe we're bigger, maybe we're taller, 
maybe because of our culture, being African-Americans, maybe we talk louder um, and people feel as though they don't know how to relate. They think it's us acting out or being bad or being disruptive. And these things are coming against our children. And the way systems are put in place, or there are some certain systems that certain things are not talked out. It's just certain actions that go against them and they're either expelled, suspended for long periods of time, but they're still not engaged in those classroom settings. We have an organization that um, is at Lone Branch and connected with us, Best Academy. And Best mm -hmm. Academy is a wonderful opportunity, especially for middle and high schoolers, for those um, parents who um, find their students having a challenge. Um, it's more one-on-one. -on -one. We have two African-American males who um, run this um, school. Um, it is more virtual. They use virtual school to do it. Um, it's certified by um, South Carolina's um, Board of Education. So it, it follows all of the rigor. It follows all of the, of the things. But we've seen much success. They really helped us out in COVID because during COVID, we had a lot of, a lot of students that needed that one-on-one -on -one attention. Parents couldn't stay home with them. They were not feeling comfortable sending them back to school at that time, but that school still exists and they're, they're with us. And I know we have great partnerships with them. We've also had some enrichment sessions this summer that Brother Parks, you have overseen. Um, and we've had great people like Mrs. Goldsmith, Miss Terry O'Donnell, Miss Miki Austin, Miss Patricia Martin, yeah. who have volunteered um, with, our, with our elementary school students and then Best Academy did our summer enrichment with our middle and high schools, along with our officer, Officer Jermaine Counts, that right. came in too. Can you talk about just for a little bit some of the things that the feedback that you heard from our summer camp, especially our elementary students, because that elementary is really important to me. That reading and math, being on a third grade reading level and a in a sixth or eighth grade reading uh, math level, um, when they when they get there. Right. And that was one of the initiatives, Pastor, that you gave me when I came on was making sure that we highlighted some of those educational core values. And that's what we wanted to make sure that we focus on with offering the summer enrichment uh, for that purpose for kindergarten to fifth grade. And we also didn't want it to be too big because we wanted to make sure that our, our ratio was enough so that we could have good quality enrichment, educational enrichment for those kids with a one to close as possible to a one to five ratio. Yes. We were able to offer math, able to offer English, science and reading. And so students were able to be there from nine to one uh, for two weeks throughout the summer. And I, we saw lots of different work. Um, and we went into it, honestly, with the idea of focusing on reading. But Ms. Terry O'Donnell, who is our reading specialist for the school district, she also noticed along with Ms. Barton, who was teaching math, and Miki noticed that they needed a lot more help almost in math than it was in reading. And everybody says that we are still catching up from that COVID year that year and a half that they're still catching up, um, whether it be in math or reading. So we went into it, uh, we gave every child a book at the end, but we really noticed that math was a big area as well. And I also wanna to touch real quick on Best Academy. That session wasn't as academically driven. It was more um, kind of more academic, academic skills, how to approach the classroom, how to approach uh, peer pressure, mentoring from our from the best academy guys. And we had like a huge response. That's my passion. The middle and high school students. We had about 15 to 20 students each session and we had some breakthrough moments. Um, there were you know students telling us what they wanted to do in life, uh, some things that they've come across with in school, what frustrates them, what what's happened to them, you'd be, be surprised what can happen when you bring together 15 to 20 students for just two days in a couple of hours, the breakthrough that can happen with that discussion. Yeah, and, and it was great. And um, I was so impressed with um, not only Best Academy, not only our team, um, but I was impressed with the attendance. Our parents, you really signed your kids up. And in and and the I think we had some room in the first session, the first go-round, but the second go-round, um, there was a great attendance. And, and so we want to thank our parents for that. Um, Brother Parts, do you see other enrichment days in, in, in our school year um, or for, for next summer as well? Yeah. And uh, what, what do you think those enrichment days will be focused on? 
we loved the model, honestly, Pastor. We were talking about how it wasn't too long. It was we were able to focus on it. We did like the fact of having a kind of capping the number of students, so it would be kind of you know quick getting the parent, getting the students in. But um, folk, having days, I feel like that are uh, purposeful that we know are going to be um, you know at a certain time focusing on this thing. Uh, even if it's not like consistent, because we all need a break. We want the kids to have fun and things like that, too. But we noticed that this was very um, beneficial and that the kids were engaged the entire time. A lot of times when you have too much time, you lose engagement. So we're, we're going to try to look at this model and maybe modify it as we go throughout the year, maybe have some pockets of days throughout the school year. But then definitely as we move into summer 23, uh, how to how we can take this model that we did with only two weeks per and kind of maybe expand it in the best way to uh, to offer that to our to our community. Yeah. We also have volunteers like Pam Ro Minister Pam Rowell, who has um, volunteer to bring back our reading nights, um, wise readers. Um, what would you say to volunteers that would like to, you know, volunteer to help with reading programs or help with math programs or help with STEM and STEAM programs? We had a wonderful um, um, facilitator you brought in for a STEAM night. Um, how, how can they contact you? And then I want to talk about this weekend before we run out of time as well. Yeah, so thank you, Pastor. Listen, the volunteer response for Long Branch Youth has been outrageous, has been amazing. Thank you so much. I really, there's about 20 names that I had to go through today just doing some things. So the, um, the volunteer form is still out there if you look on social media. I also believe that it got put on the website today, actually. Um, also, you can email me. Uh, I'll put it, I'll try to type it in here real quick, but Long Branch Youth LBY. You can email me at Long Branch Youth LBY at gmail.com. Um, you can email me if you would like to volunteer, whether that's with uh, Children's Church, which is kicking off this weekend, too. We have so much going on. There's so much going on. We have Children's Church kicking off. We're, I'm super excited about Children's Church because we have a rotation of almost 15 teachers. Wow. And that means that we can really space it out and nobody's going to get overwhelmed. So I'm excited about having fresh teachers. We got a new Wait, man, I, I want you to stop. I want you to say that again because um, I think your volume was a little low uh, when you said that. <laughs> I wanted to be high. We have over 15 volunteers for Children's Church right yes. now. And that, I mean, the volunteer. It's still, I mean, volunteerism, We can people still can volunteer, like the volunteerism um, window is still open. So yeah. fifth, think about that, 15 people, I think that's enough to praise God about. I think, you know, in the chat, we all just give kudos to those who volunteer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 15 volunteers, we can put people on a ro rotating schedule. No one is going to get burnt out. You can still come to church. You can still participate in the service that you desire. Um, and, and, and that's wonderful. Um, can you please talk about this weekend? I know we about, have about another minute left, and I want to just read one more scripture before we get Yeah, on. this this weekend, real quick, we have a lot going on this weekend, starting on Saturday at 2.30, which is our parent student summit. We're going to have different tables set up. Um, basically, we're going to have free haircuts from Be Unique um, Barber Academy. Miss Mary Neal has set that up. She's hoping to bring about three to four barbers. We're going to have some STEAM activities again. She came and did a, a session with us one night. She's coming again. We're going to have career counseling, um, academics counseling from a certified counselor. We're going to have uh, school district representatives are going to be there. Some administrators are going to be there. Um, there's going to be lots of different LBY. We're going to be there if your child is interested in getting more involved with us as children churches starting. If you want to volunteer, we're going to have an LBY table up. We're going to have a school district athletic director. The goal for this weekend was to basically try to cover everything that you want to talk about, like but you really can't because you can't get, get to somebody. We want to try to cover all that. We're going to have a, a quick uh, conversational panel with them at four. We're also giving away school supplies as well. Um, that's from 2.30 to four. Then at four, we're going to sit down with all these wonderful people with all this knowledge and talk to them. Uh, have you answered, ask them any questions that they would like? And then on Sunday, it's our worship service that I've been praying about, Pastor Doug has been praying about. I'm expecting a major move of God just to covering. We're going to set that family atmosphere in the sanctuary and we're going to let the kids know look, we are here to worship. This is for you. This is solely for you. We want you to feel comfortable getting covered by God as you go into the school year. That's going yeah, on. So let's, let's just recap this Saturday, this coming Saturday, August 13th, yes, August sir. 13th, 2.30 to 5 o'clock, 2.30 to 4, school supplies, all the fun stuff at 4 o'clock. This is so important. 4 o'clock is where the information is. 
four o'clock is where the information is. Parents, 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 please don't come get a pack of paper and not get the information. Parents, please don't. Let's not train our kids to come and get a book bag or a, 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 a whatever called drawstring bag, whatever it is, full of supplies, but then skip over the information. That 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 that's like buying a book but not reading the book. That that that's like buying a meal but not sitting down and eating and partaking of the nutrients nutrients of the meal. Okay, so four o'clock a panel, and then on Sunday, that's praying time. That's worship time. That is we have guests coming in. We have professional um, educators coming in that Sunday. We have community leaders that are praying that Sunday. We have special music guests that Sunday. This Sunday, and then we also have the spoken word. Um, by Minister Goldsmith um, from King David um, Baptist. I know we have a Minister Albert Goldsmith. It's not 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 Minister Albert Goldsmith. It's actually um, um, Minister Goldsmith from King David Baptist Church. He's an educator too, and in education, he's going to bring a powerful word. Parents, we want you there three o'clock at the chapel. Um, just so everyone will know, on Sunday um, things will be in the chapel. On Saturday, where will things be at? Um, and Saturday will be in the ministry center. Saturday in the ministry center, Sunday in the chapel. Listen, we're out of time. We're out of time. We definitely have to do this again. Um, and, and I want to make sure that you get all the information. I hope tonight has been inspirational to you. Parents, I hope it's been something that you heard. And not just parents, but they. I want this to be for they. And they brought, mm -hmm. and they brought children to Jesus. To be touched by him. The Bible says that Jesus rebuked the disciples and told them, don't you ever do that again. And not only did he say that, but then he turned it around, used the children as examples and said, listen, unless we come as little children to the kingdom of God, we will not enter it. And then the Bible says, and he took them up in his arms, laid his hands upon them, and bless them. Listen, the last scripture I want to give you tonight as we close out is Proverbs chapter 22, Proverbs chapter 22, verse number six. We all know it. It says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, it will not depart from him. Listen, I want you to know not only will he not depart from it, it won't depart from him. It'll be inside of them. Listen, Long Branch and friends, thank you so very much to all of our first time viewers. God bless you. And we thank God for you. Listen, we would love for you to support the ministry. There are three ways that you can give. You know how to give and we thank you for your support. Last but not least, you know what I'm going to say. I love you. First Lady loves you. Ramaya loves you. Even Chip loves you. And because he's our special guest, even Brother Donovan Park loves you too. And listen, and but I'm impact, your impact, but we're better together. Go in peace and serve the Lord every day of your life.